Hi guys, it's Dan again here from Univibe Audio in Birmingham. Now, as anybody who's ever recorded a drum kit is probably already going to know, there's a lot of stuff that you have to keep in mind. I mean, in most cases, you're probably going to be working with more microphones on more different sources in close proximity to each other than with any other instrument. Besides finding a position for each mic that sounds great for the drum you're actually aiming it towards, you've also got to consider how all the other drums around it are affected by it as well. Sometimes half the battle is just getting a good balance between the sounds that you do want and the sounds that you don't. So this week I'm going to show you five simple tips that can help you to improve the clarity and the separation between your drums before you've even set up a single mic. First of all, set up around the floor tom. If you've been following our channel for a while now, hopefully you already know about finding the magic floor tom spot as we discussed in this episode and the reasons for doing so. For now, let's just say that once you've found a point in the room where the floor tom resonates well, it makes sense to set up the rest of the kit around that point. If you have the means to do so, it's a good idea to keep the toms freestanding from the kick. So for those of you who have a tom mount attached to the top of the bass drum, it means mounting them from cymbal stands or a rack system instead. If you're working with a drummer who only uses one rack and one floor, you might even get away with using a snare stand. Basically, this is to reduce the amount of vibration being transferred into the toms from the kick, as this can add unwanted resonance when the toms aren't being played. That can make setting noise gates or expanders a lot more difficult and also just generally add some muddiness into your tom tracks that'll take away from the clarity of your kit. By keeping the snare and toms as low and as flat as you can get away with, you're increasing the angle that the sticks need to travel in order to hit them. This means you can get more power out of each stroke with less effort involved, and if you're making solid consistent hits every time, you don't need me to tell you how much of a good thing that will be for your mix. The other benefit to this of course is that it keeps the toms further away from the cymbals and it also makes it a lot easier to position a typical cardioid or hypercardioid microphone with its rejection point keeping the cymbal spill to a minimum. As an extension of the previous point, it's also a good idea to raise your cymbals up a bit higher than normal. There are a couple of limiting factors to this, such as the ceiling height of the room and keeping everything within reach so that it's still comfortable to play, but you can usually get enough distance in there to make a difference. I'd also advise angling the cymbals towards yourself a little bit more than usual to compensate for the extra height as this can also help you avoid hitting them directly on the edge which might eventually cause cracks if you keep hitting them in that way over time. The same logic that applies to the toms and the rest of the cymbals will also hold true between the snare and the hi-hats. Here it's even more important though as along with the kick the snare is usually going to be played a lot more often than anything else on the kit and with a lot of dynamic variations that need to be captured well. When it comes to positioning a mic they're also very prone to picking up spill from the hats, which are usually its closest neighbour. The hi-hats themselves can also be played in many different ways throughout the course of a song, although I have to admit I've never run into a scenario where I thought they were too quiet. Putting some horizontal space between your snare and your hats is obviously going to help with your separation, but if you find that it's too far away for you to play the hats comfortably, then the other solution is to raise them up a bit higher on the stamp. And there you have it, that's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching guys, I've been Dan from Univibe Audio, please remember to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out the blog to go with this video at blog.univibeaudio.co.uk.